my pleasure to, to introduce Maja Semazar from uh, Slovenia, uh, Institute of on Oncology in Ljubljana. And this is a very active team uh, involved in uh, electrochemotherapy, uh, cancer, electrochemotherapy, and gene electrotransfer also to treat cancer. So welcome. Thank you very much. And I would like to thank the organizing committee for the invitation to present our work here at the conference. Uh, if I can get my slides. Okay, uh, so I will talk about the combination of two therapies. Uh, it's about both are using electroporation as a delivery system and just to, nothing to disclose. And as electroporation, it was already introduced by Richard, it can be used to uh, introduce different molecules into the cells. In this first row is the application, how to introduce the small molecules such as chemotherapeutic drugs. This is going by simple diffusion into the cells and the end point is killing of cells. Then we can introduce small RNA molecules and even the plasmids. But for the plasmids we need uh, more uh, sophisticated parameters and more studies to optimize the parameters. So, how is it used, electroporation, as a platform in the treatment of cancer? Since for the application of the drugs, this is already used in many for man treatment of many different cancers, and primarily it is used for the cutaneous metastasis of melanoma, breast cancer, and head of neck cancers. It can be used also for the non-cutaneous metastasis for the deeper seeded tumors, and the most advantages has been done here for the liver, soft tissue sarcoma, and also pancreas. It is also used in the primary tumor, some of the breast, ovary, and pancreas. In the field of gene therapy, there's a lot of work on the preclinical level, but there are also some clinical studies, especially here in the States with the interleukin-12. So what is the main principle of this first type of the therapy, electrochemotherapy. If you have a tumor, you inject the drug. It can be either intratumorously or intravenously. Then when there is a concentration of the drug high enough in the tumor, you apply the pulses, enable the drug to enter the cells, and this drug will kill the tumor cells. So it's a, actually a very physical application of electroporation. In Europe, this treatment is well established. It is in a national guidelines in many different countries. Just for example, this is in the national guidelines in UK and in Germany. And currently in Europe, there are over 140 centers that are performing electrochemotherapy and many thousand patients are treated every year. Just to show you what is really important if you want to perform electrochemotherapy in a proper way, you need to have electric fields which will be distributed over the tumor and you need the drug, bleomycin and cisplatin are currently in the clinical routine, must be present in the tumor in sufficient amounts to enter the cells and exert its uh, action. So just for an uh, introduction, this presentation, this is a tumor nodule. You inject first the local anesthesia, injection of the drug, application of the pulses, and this is how the nodule looks immediately after the application. You can see the marks of the electrode, at least I hope you can see it, and a bit of ischemia. So there are different electrodes available on the market for the treatment. You can use either plate electrodes or needle electrodes, and depending on the electrode used, there is a different field distribution. And for the deeper seeded tumor and for the liver tumors, we are using a single needle electrodes for the treatment. Just one example how it looks. In Europe, we are incorporated in a, a group. Eureka is for the head and neck tumors. 
This is, was 105 patients included in this study. Difference response rates in head and neck tumors. Basal cell carcinoma is the top tumor to respond. And this is just one of the picture how it looks the treatment of the primary squamous cell carcinoma, a big tumor before the treatment, two months after formation of crust that fell over, and then you can see it's a good cosmetic effect with the long-lasting effect also. So this was for the drug application. And another application of electroporation is for the delivery of plasmids of therapeutic genes. And in this view, we can see two applications. We can look at gene electrotransfer as a local approach when we deliver the plasmid directly, if we are in oncology, to the tumor tissue. And we have a local production of the proteins that act locally. Or we can still have some proteins that can enter the bloodstream, so we have also can have the effect on distant metastasis. Another approach that we can use to, is to have a systemic approach that we perform the gene electrotransfer either to the muscle or to the skin. And we can use in this situation also the gene electrotransfer to, for the DNA vaccination, especially when we are using skin as a target tissue. Muscle is the tissue that has a high production capacity. So when we are transfecting the muscle, we will have a huge, big production of the protein that will be uh, shredded then into the uh, bloodstream. And in muscle, we can obtain the transfection that lasts even a year or more. So what therapeutic effects do we want? We want to have the suppression of growth of the primary and metastatic tumor. We want to have the prevention of the metastatic spread. And we want to have also long-term anti-tumor immunity and prolongation or even cures of the patients. How the DNA is going into the cells after electrotransfection is still not known. There's a lot of studies going on. We know that it's not so simple as with the drugs, that we need to have some sort of attachment of the DNA to the cell membrane. Then it's translocated into the cytoplasm, but it has to reach the nucleus to be transfected. Whether this is endocytosis or different types of just entry of plasmid through the pores via actin filaments, we don't know yet for sure. But we know that this DNA has to escape the endosomal compartment if it wants to reach the nucleus. And when it is in the cytoplasmic compartment, when the DNA is present in the cytoplasm, we know, we showed it in our studies, that it binds to the different receptors for the DNA. For, it binds to the DNA sensors, and this leads to activation of pro-inflammatory cytokines and interferon type 1. So what I wanted to stress that even with the just gene electrotransfer of the plasmid DNA, we pro provoke immune response. However, to be able to further boost that immune response, we selected in our study another pro-inflammatory cytokine. This is interleukin-12, which action is known to be anti-tumor, not direct anti-tumor effect, but by activation of T cells and NK cells with the production then of interferon gamma, TNF-alpha, and also having high uh, anti-angiogenic effect. So we did some preclinical studies on the mouse models. This is the local approach when we deliver directly intertumorally. This was the sarcoma tumor model where we achieved 90% of tumor cures. If we performed peritumoral, which means subcutaneous in mice, the percentage was, uh, of complete responses was 16. We also observed the increased levels of interleukin-12 and interferon gamma in the serum and in the tumors of these treated mice. And there was also an abscopal effect on the left tumors that were not treated but injected the cells at the same time as primary tumor. 
We can also obtain a good effect when we apply the gene therapy systemically. So when we apply the gene electrotransfer to the muscle, we could follow the effect on the subcutaneous tumor growing on the flank of the mice. Again, two different tumor models, the sarcoma tumor models, and we could obtain up to 28% of tumor cures with this systemic approach. Uh, this is, was tested, as I stated at the beginning, in the USA. The group of Richard Hellett and Adil Daoud tested on the patients presenting metastasis of malignant melanoma. And the one that were treated reduced in size, but also there was an upscopal effect on the untreated tumor that was long-lasting even more than one year. However, if we look at both therapies together, we can obtain high percentage of cures, but there is a non-long-term memory. So what we want to do is to combine the therapies to act electrochemotherapy as a site of vaccination, the one that would release the tumor antigens and that we will boost this immune response with the interleukin-12 therapy. There are some very encouraging first reports with the radiation therapy that is a local ablative therapy combining with immune therapies. And our hypothesis was whether we can combine these therapies both based on electroporation to synergize. So this was the hypothesis that we proposed. We have intratumoral electrochemotherapy as a site of vaccination, which acts by releasing the uh, tumor antigens that are then uh, eaten by the antigen-presenting cells. This is boosted with the peritumoral interleukin-12 gene transfer. And then in lymph nodes, we get the activation of T cells that can act back on the tumor and also on the metastasis. I hope that you can see here that electrochemotherapy really provokes inflammation, that you can see that this leg with a lot of tumor nodules is a bit swollen and red, so we know that there is inflammation and release of tumor antigen that we can then uh, help them to act with immunogene therapy. So is it working? We tested in a preclinical model on a highly aggressive uh, B16 melanoma tumors. We tested two different, uh, three different uh, chemotherapeutic drugs, cisplatin and bleomycin, the one that are used in the clinic, and also oxaliplatin as an analog to cisplatin. And actually, to our surprise, uh, cisplatin really produced a synergistic effect with the interleukin-12 therapy, resulting in 38% of tumor cures. I would also like to mention that we use the equi-effective dose, uh, uh, dose drug of the do doses of the drugs, so that electrochemotherapy in all different drugs produce the same effect, and with the oxaliplatin and bleomycin, we got just a bit prolonged the uh, growth, while with cisplatin we got uh, tumor cures. So we can say that electrochemotherapy with cisplatin is producing immunogenic cell death. It also had an upscopal effect, so worked on the secondary uh, untreated tumor prolonged uh, growth. So. To bring this therapy closer to the clinic, we are collaborating closely with the veterinary faculty in Ljubljana, and we performed a clinical study where we combined electrochemotherapy with cisplatin with the peritumoral electro interleukin-12 gene electrotransfer. We used in this study the human interleukin-12 gene because at that time there was not possible to get the canine. Why dogs? Dogs are very good translational model because they share the same environment with the humans because the tumors that they're having, they're spontaneous tumors and they share the same biological features as the human tumors. Since there is not a lot of gold standards for the therapies, you can actually propose the owner a new therapy and it's on the owner 
to decide whether he, will, he or she will accept the therapy. This is a very large group of potential patients. Only in Europe there is 55 million of dogs and because their life expectancy is much, much longer than in laboratory animals, we can actually follow the side effects, the long-term side effects. So this was the flow of the study. We included 18 dogs with 18 mastocytoma tumors. Mastocytoma tumors is a cutaneous tumors in dog. It's the bigger uh, group of these tumors in dogs, around 21% of all skin tumors in dogs are mastocytoma. So we performed first electrochemotherapy intertumorally, which was followed immediately with the in, uh, gene transfer. For both, we used the plate electrodes, but with the different parameters. This is the tumor parameters for electrochemotherapy. And this is the parameters for the skin transfer also with the plate electrodes. And then we follow up for the side effects, for the tumor response, and also for some uh, histological changes that were in the tumor. So summary of the response, after four weeks, the complete response rate was 67%, which even increased to the 72 at the end of observation period, which was really long, more than three years, 14 months was median observation period. This is one of the typical uh, responses. This is a dog with a tumor on the head, which was bigger than three centimeters. After one week formation of crust, which falls off, and then we get a slowly shrinkage of the tumor. This was three years and a half, and uh, just uh, I heard about half a year ago, this dog is still alive and without tumors. We were looking also what is the immune response of these tumors, what we can see. We were looking for the T cells. This is before treatment, some scanty T cells. And after the treatment in the dog with complete response, we can still see the presence of T cells. In both cases, the, we could see some of the regulatory T cells, but this was no, in no correlation with response to the therapy. However, on the other hand, we could see a huge infiltration of macrophages, even before therapy, but this was really significantly higher after the therapy. The proliferation of cells was reduced uh, in the dogs that were treated. This is a sample for the dog, from the dog with the partial response. Also the apoptotic cells were reduced and what was really, really reduced was the microvessel density. We know from previous study that electrochemotherapy has vascular disrupting effects, even interleukin-12, so the, form the vessels were really reduced in the treated tumors. So with these very promising results, we started a new clinical trial where we get some improvements. First of all, we moved to canine interleukin-12, and another improvement that was done was to use the non-invasive electrodes for the transfection of skin. This is called multi-array electrode. That uh, the electrodes are on the spring, so you don't penetrate into the skin, and it was shown it's really good for the skin electroporation. Uh, so far, we included in this study 48 dogs. The study started to include in December 2014, and due to the lack of the time, I will present only the results on the mast cell tumors. Uh, this is for the, after one month, the complete response was 49%, which raised again because of this slow shrinking of the tumor to 84%. This is how it looks, tumor reduction and complete response after eight weeks. Uh, combination with tumor debulking, also a complete response. 
But uh, what I would like to stress out that we have also an upscopal effect. It is difficult to follow it because the mastocytoma tumors are usually solitary tumors. And also due to the technical, ethical reasons, you cannot really say the owner when the tumor has multiple metastases to say we will treat one and then look for the others. So we have three of the dogs where we detected, we could detect the obscopal effect. One was that have two tumors. And the other two dogs were, uh, they just have the enlarged lymph nodes. And with these enlarged lymph nodes, we could see that these really lymph nodes decreased inside and the tumors that were treated com uh, responded completely. The one that we could really follow the upscopal effect was a dog, Yak Terrier, which has a two tumor, one the, the hip and one of the sternum. And this one of, on the hip was treated. This is this one, and this is the one that was not treated. And this is four weeks after the therapy. You can see the scar at the treated tumor with complete response and a big, a big reduction in the tumor that was not treated. So for the conclusion, we can really say this therapy is feasible. We didn't observe any systemic side effects. Uh, also, the local side effects are minimal. We saw some immune cell infiltration, increase in cytotoxic T cells, and mainly reduction of the vasculature and T-Rex. So how is this therapy in perspective with other therapies? Where is its position? These are all the data from the, our veterinary clinic the local survival, this green is when we treated them with only interleukin-12. Despite the very promising mice study in spontaneous tumor in dogs, we couldn't cure with interleukin-12 alone. This is surgery which is known that depending on the gradus of the tumor, we can have in around 18 months 50% recurrence. With electrochemotherapy alone, we were at the 62%, which was not significantly different from the surgery group. This is for the human interleukin-12, and with the canine, we rise the percentage of complete responses to 84%. What is actually worth to measure, mention it also, there is no recurrence, there is no uh, uh, also the uh, showing of the distant metastasis. So what we can say, we confirm the hypothesis that it's working, and our future work is going into the human clinical trial to use the electrochemotherapy as a site of vaccination, which will be boosted by the interleukin-12. We are waiting for the patent for this human interleukin-12, and we hope we'll start with the study next year. Just to acknowledge the group from the Institute, veterinary faculty, some of the studies on the preclinical level were also done with the colleagues from Old Dominion University with the funding of Aero One project. And I would like to thank you for the attention. John, it is now open to questions. Hi, uh, congratulations for these uh, impressive results. Uh, I was curious about if there is any reason for doing the electroporation uh, of IL-12 peritumoral versus intratumoral. Uh, we are, the thing is that if you are doing intratumoral and you have also chemotherapeutic drug that is working on the DNA, and for example, bleomycin is working as an endonuclease, the thing is that if you would put together the drug and the plasmid, the drug can actually cut the plasmid and then you would not have an effect of the plasmid. <coughs> this is one of the reasons why not to put them together. Okay, thank you. Could you go to the microphone, please? Uh, okay, uh, maybe I can repeat it. Yeah, 
the cisplatin, the uptake into the tumor cells by cisplatin is a bit uh, induced by copper transporters, but this is only very minor intake of the drug. With electroporation, you really enhance. And I didn't show this because these are very old studies that we did. If you inject just into a tumoral this is cisplatin, you don't get the tumor cures. With the electroporation together, you can get also the complete responses of the tumors. In the case of bleomycin, bleomycin is a hydrophilic drug, is a quite big drug, is an antibiotics, and doesn't have any transport, uh, pro transporter proteins on the membrane. So some of the uptake is by the endocytosis, but you can really increase the cytotoxicity several thousand <coughs> times of bleomycin when you use the electroporation with the drug. Sorry, if the, oh, the thing is that... Uh, can, you, can you repeat the question? Yeah, please? the thing is whether it's better systemic or local injection of the interleukin-12. I think that to work properly, you need to have uh, also tumor-associated antigens and antigen-presenting cells at the site of the tumor, and it needs to stimulate those cells because that's why you need to have interleukin-12 present locally around the tumor to further stimulate the anchor cells, the T-cells. Thank you. Next question and last question. Ex excellent work. Uh, do you have any other ideas for candidate genes besides IL-12 for this type of therapy? Uh, one really good candidate gene that we already are working on it is TNF-alpha but you still need uh, to have a combination. The other one should be, I don't know, that Richard was doing, it was interleukin-15, and maybe interleukin-12, and maybe it would be also very good just also to produce the plasmids that would provide, uh, that would produce the antibodies that are blocking the immune system. So let's say anti-CTL4 or PDL1 or something or silence either or something like this to have the combinations. Okay, thank you. So now it's my pleasure.